61A Fall 2016 Final Walkthrough. Now this test has a What Would Python Display page, an environment diagram question, a page on box and pointers, a page on trees and or lists, a question on a reset function, a scheme question, and a hailstone question. Let's just get right into it with the What Would Python Display questions. All right, here's the whole body. By now, you've probably noticed that while these kind of questions aren't th really the most logically difficult, a big challenge comes in keeping track of everything. One thing you might have noticed about Python is that it really doesn't care about the body of a function until it's called. Let's first list our functions and ignore all the messy code that describes them. Okay, so we have nine objects lists here, and also this reduce function and the pair class, both of which the problem says we'll need. All right, with all that set up, we're ready to start going. The first question is this. All we gotta do is print and print whatever we find in the parentheses. Two and, hold up, there's a function in here. Well, we gotta do that so we can find out what to print, don't we? We need to call s on another function. Well, we gotta do that so we can find out what to call s on, don't we? Oh, well, it's just another print function and it's telling us to print three. So we put three down here. And, rem and remember that print statements evaluate to none. So we replace this whole print statement with none. And if you need a refresher, Professor De Niro talks about it right here. So now we need to call s on none. When we look at s, we see that it refers to the print function. We replace s up here with print, so down here we print none. You might think that printing none might give us an error, but that's not the rule in Python. And now we can replace this whole s function call with just none. So finally, we have print two comma none and we write down on one line two and none. On to the next question. We have one list that contains a list with three and a separate list with two. Let's visualize this. And to make things easier, let's ignore this one in brackets. All right, there we go. We pass that into this emit function. Now what does emit do? Well, here it is, it's a list comprehension. So we're going to be creating a new list. Because list comprehension always iterates over something, the question is what we need to iterate over. Well, the answer is the input, which is just our initial list. So in the lambda function, let's just replace these y's here with our list to make everything easier. What the list comprehension is saying is that each element in this new list is going to be our old list added to an element of our old list. Because our old list has two elements, we know that our whole call to emit will be replaced with a two element list. So let's just replace our emit statement to keep that in mind. All right, so, our zeroth element in our new list is going to be the sum of the zeroth element of our old list and a copy of our old list. So it looks like this. Understand that because we're adding lists, each entry in our new list up here will be a list. Our first element is similar, a list that's the sum of the first element of our old list and a copy of our old list. And because of this one, we just write down the first element of our new list. We do that and we're done. On to the next question. First off, let's replace this s with print to make everything easier. It should be clear to you that because we're printing a pair, we'll need to know its stir method as opposed to its repr method. Click here for a refresher. There's also a clue on your page. So let's find out what this pair looks like. The second element is nothing, so that means that this pair is automatically well formed. Because of that, in our answer, we can draw these parentheses without a period, and we need to figure out what goes inside, i.e. the first element. The first element is a pair that is not well formed, so it looks like 4.5 in all parentheses. Our answer looks like this, and we can move on to the next question. We pass into the time function the number 2 and the function might. So initially, we have 2 and might 2, or print 4. First off, we'll need to see whether or not just this first part is true to see if we'll need to print this 4. 2 is a true value, but what about might 2? We'll just have to evaluate it, won't we? We're passing 2 into might, so we replace every moo with 2. And so, as you can see, we're calling time on 2 plus 1, or 3, and the print function. So now we have 3 and print 3, or print 5. 3 is true, and now we need to execute this print 3. We print 3 in our answer, and we replace this whole thing with none. None is a false value, so this whole and statement becomes false. And so we move on to the next pair of the or statement, which is print 5.
we print 5 in our answer and we replace the whole thing with none. False or none returns false, and so now, in our very first call to time, we can replace might2 with false. This whole and statement then becomes false. So now we can carry out this print 4. We print 4 and replace this whole thing with none. False or none returns false, but because we're not doing anything more with it, we're done, and we can move on to the next question. This question, I think, is a test of your ability to figure out what the reduce function does. Well, I get ahead of myself. Pause is called on the range 4 to 6. Remember that a range includes the first thing and goes all the way but does not include the second thing. So we're just dealing with 4 and 5. Let's write the range like that. And now let's look at pause. The variable here is s. So let's replace everywhere we see s with our range. All right, there we go. Now you can see that pause is just calling the reduce function, so let's talk about it. As an aside, because we have swap here, let's just bring that up. So, reduce. Okay, here it is. It takes in a function some list or iterable of values and an, in and an initial value. And what it does is for every element of the list, you call the function on the initial value and the element. And the result you get is now called initial. And you keep doing this until you run out of elements in your list and you return the final result. Got it? No? Yeah, okay, yeah. That was all really technical and kind of convoluted, so I'll put it like this. What the reduce function does is basically this. You have a list and some first value. You put the value at the front of the list. Now you have a function. This function is going to take in the first two elements of the list and split out a value. It keeps doing this until you have one value left. Hope that makes sense. If it still doesn't, well then I tell you to go to office hours. So now pass into the reduce function, the swap function, our list containing 4 and 5 and 3. Okay, so let's put 3 at the front of the list and call swap on 3 and 4. And as you can see, swap gives us back a list. So we have a list containing 4 and 3, and now we call swap on that and 5, which is going to give us a list containing 5 and a list containing 4 and 3. And that's our answer. On to the next question. Let's ignore the tuple for now and just focus on what the inside's going to give us. We're going to need to look at the t function. And inside t, we see that we're going to need to look at the time function again, so let's bring that up as well. We're going to be passing in the list 5, 6 into t, and in t, the input variable is me. So let's point at all me's to the list 5, 6. All right. So now we're passing into time the list 5, 6 and this lambda function, which pops off some value off the end of the list and puts it into another list. So now we're going to evaluate the time function to see what we're going to yield first. When we execute time in this first instant, the list 5, 6 is our t, and this lambda function is our f. Let's do the proper replacements and see what we get. The list of 5, 6 and the lambda function on the list. All right, now we need to evaluate the lambda. Pop removes the last element of the list and the whole function evaluates to the removed element. So we get a list containing 6 on the right side of the AND, and 6 is removed from the list. Remember in AND statements, we return the last true value. So the first thing we'll yield is a list containing 6. Let's make a note of that. Looking back at t, me is still a true value, just a list containing 5. So we'll need to yield another value. We're going to yield a list containing 5 and then be done. The reasoning as to why is exactly the same as why we yielded 6. So now back to this tuple function. Remember how we call list on a generator? It puts every value yielded into a list. And the principle is exactly the same here, except everything is put into a tuple. So our answer is a tuple that looks like a list containing 6 and a list containing 5, and then we're done. On to the next question. So this is pretty nice. If you look at newt, we aren't going to be dealing with any of these other lambda functions. Let's just go through the problem. We pass in this list, 258, and every time we see graves, we'll refer to this list. It looks pretty messy now, but as we go through the code, it'll clean up. Tina is going to be set to 8, and now the list is 25. Now with if statements, it's important to know that it, if it contains a function, it's carried out completely. If you're me, you might think that it does the function just to see if it's true, and then everything resets, but that's not the case. 
So we pop off the list again to see if 5 is divisible by 3, it's not, and now the list is just 2. Now we print something. That something is Tina, 8, and what we get when we pop graves again, which will give us 2. So on one line, we put 8 and 2. We move on with our list pop into obliteration. That means this if statement is going to give us false, meaning we skip this return statement and instead go to this return statement, which tells us to return a pair containing Tina plus 1 and Tina, or a pair with 9 and 8, which we replace our first call to Newt with. We're done with Newt, but not with the problem yet. We still need to S, or print, this pair. As you can see, it isn't well formed, so we show that by writing 9.8 and we're done. On to the final question. Right now, let's just do some easy organization. Let's replace S with print and T with this list. Hopefully you can see why this is the case. We pass in our list. Tina is set to 21, which is then popped off the list. 18 is popped off to see if it's divisible by 3, which it is. Then we follow the if statement to see what we need to do. We need to pop off the list again, so now 15 is removed. Now we print something. That something is 21 and whatever's popped off the list, which is 12, and we put that in our answer. Alright, good. Because we still have a list, we go down this return statement instead of the one we went to last time. We see that we'll need to return a pair where the first element is going to be Tina minus 1, or 20, and the second element is Newt called on the list that's still left. So in this new call to Newt, Tina is set to 9, which is then popped off the list. 6 is popped off to see if it's divisible by 3, which it is. We pop the list again, so 3 is removed. We're at the print statement again, so we print Tina, which in this call is 9, and whatever's popped off the list, 0. So we put that on our answer. This if statement has a false value, so we return a pair containing 9 plus 1, 10, and 9. We return it to the first time we called Newt, careful now. So this box with the original Newt statement will point to a pair with 10 and 9. We replace our original newt expression with this pair, and to print it, we put down 2010.9. Now let's pull up, up the environment diagram. 